and joining us from the fray, from it amidst it all, um, and after rescuing people this morning, it would appear, is Neil Curtin. Neil, good morning to you. Are you there, Neil? Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Can you hear me? I can. You've got much better coverage. We tried to talk to Deborah Burnside, who you'll know beforehand, and she was a Jervoy town cut out, and that was nothing. You're somewhere, obviously, sure. where your comms are okay. Uh, it looks like that. Just um, Harold Holt, uh, Av, Michael, um, uh, just looking at floodwaters now. We've got a police car next to us, a helicopter in the air, and uh, uh, she's all go here again this morning. Okay. Now, Neil, could you tell us exactly what has happened this morning that has prompted you to be in that vicinity? Well, we've uh, had a major breach by the looks of it. I've just got a vehicle pulled up next to me, and I'll have to reverse back because they're growling at me. So uh, I can do that while... I'm just lost, Neil. <laughs> I know. It doesn't that... But you see? He's probably... He's, he's nearly there. I can hear you, but you're obviously having trouble hearing me. Yeah, I can hear you now, mate, so don't move. Um, okay, all right. Um, so, because yeah, that's what we've noticed, that, that it's in intermittent. Okay, what's yes, happened, yes. please? What's happened this morning? Uh, well, the, the, it looks like the banks of the Tutaikuru River at Awatoto have, have breached, and uh, that that's spilled right through uh, the uh, Awatoto area. I've just come a bit of a tour around the Maranui Golf Course, uh, the new suburb of Tiawa, and, uh, and now into um, Mariwa and Puramai, and uh, extensive flooding throughout um, uh, knee-deep water there again this morning, a, a breach of the uh, the cross-country drain, um, uh, a really a second dose of devastation hitting, hitting the city. Okay, are people being evacuated as you talk? Yes, they are. Yes, we've got police blocks on all, all roads. Uh, I've just come from uh, one of our Hohepa houses in 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 the suburb, uh, and just to deliver medication, which is urgently needed, uh, and uh, water water virtually coming in the door of the uh, the uh, utility that I'm in. Now, the Hohepa homes deals with people with um, intellectual capacity issues. Is that right? That's correct, yes, uh, either Down syndrome or autism and uh, or challenging behaviours. So uh, we've got uh, a major challenge on our hands trying to manage people that just simply don't understand what's happening to them and uh, are looking out on this uh, uh, the sea uh, sea in front of them, the sea of water that's there uh, and, uh, and are really struggling uh, emotionally to cope with that. Oh, of course they are. Um, and that must be the case of a large number of people dealing with as well. Uh, this morning I heard Absolutely. the Chief Executive of Transpower say that they haven't even been to see the um, uh, substation at Redcliffe yet, but that's out. That's your major power supply into Napier. Is that right, Neil? Yes, correct. Yes, that's, that's the, uh, the, the major uh, connect connectivity to the, to the city. Without that, we're, uh, we're really in a hole, uh, totally flooded out. You've really got to ask questions about why you locate such a critical piece of infrastructure on, on, uh, right in the flood zone. Uh, but that's a, that's a question for another day. Uh, but uh, the result of that is that um, uh, that's likely to be out out of action for at least a week. Uh, and um, so we've got major problems trying to cope with our power throughout the city. And that's going to be a huge issue. Um, uh, again, the head of Transpower this morning um, was saying that they can't make any guarantee that they're going to be restoring power for days, plural, um, and they, they haven't got a solution yet. They're sitting there this morning trying to work out a workaround. Last night, you live in yep. Variety, which is uh, on the hill, um, a rather nice area of, of Napier, so out of the yes. flooding. Uh, do you have electricity at all there? No, we, no. There's, there's, there's nothing, nothing, nothing for miles to see right throughout the whole, uh, the whole uh, area. There's just no, no power supply whatsoever. So uh, uh, we're we're in the dark, uh, along with uh, many thousands of others. I've also listened to the mayor this morning, uh, Kirsten Wise, say that uh, although there's been a national emergency declared, they haven't seen any practical assistance arrive yet from the government. Um, primarily because it's so hard to get to you. Um, what sort of assistance is required now? I, th I think the, the major thing, Michael, will be getting some critical food supplies in. Um, it's it's the sort of bread supplies if they're not available. I, I just tried to get to the supermarket this morning. Some of our, our houses have uh, into their emergency uh, 
uh, supplies, which are a bit limited, um, muesli bars and the likes, but uh, uh, they need to move on from those soon. So I'm suggesting uh, it'll be some of those meat supplies. They, they, we're cooking on uh, on on, sto- on uh, gas barbecues, etc. So I would suggest that uh, in the next few days it'll be uh, it'll be those sorts of food products that can be easily uh, cooked on a barbecue. It'll be bread. Uh, it'll be milk supplies, um, and and uh, ultimately gas bottles as well. You know, we'll need to get uh, uh, gas to to a lot of people because they'll be those supplies will be running out. Um, and deodorant, I'd say, Michael, because we're going to be very smelly at the end of this. Well, that's right. You're not going to be able to have a. Sh- well, that's the other thing I was going. Do you have water coming out of taps? Yes, there's the the. Uh, unfortunately, the city water supply is uh, is still functional. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they get on with their pumping uh, uh, their requirements there. I'm not sure how uh, what what pumping uh, capacity they've got by way of generators, but uh, that's that's going to be an issue um, maintaining those uh, those critical that critical services of getting the water to uh, into the households. At least that gives an opportunity. Uh, for those connected to the public system to uh, uh, to have water, uh, we're on bore supply, and many others are around the city, and uh, so we we uh, we don't have that luxury of uh, being able to turn a tap on. Now the other thing is, you've as I said in my introductions before, um, you've been banging on. Probably you were one of the first, in actual fact, to say that climate change is real. It's here. It's now, and we've got to, in actual fact, react much quicker. And in your neck of the woods, I know um, you've also been arguing that the flood banks that are so critical um, to protecting livelihoods um, and lives um, in in Hawke's Bay, um, they need to be improved as well. There must be a yes, horrible... So, so. I've got that right, haven't I? Because I'm sure I've, yeah, I've yes, heard you on that issue. Yes, yes. No, it, it's I've been I've been beating that drum since the 2020 event. Um, uh, I'm sitting exactly the same spot as I was uh, in November 2020, uh, looking at the same floodwaters coming over the same riverbanks, and I'm saying to myself, how on earth did this happen? Uh, why have we not been able to put this on crisis mode and uh, and put urgent solutions in play? Uh, that that's that's uh, that's that's the discussion for another day. Today is about. Uh, getting getting critical supri- supplies to people, but we've got a reset. We've got a we've got a focus on this as a crisis now. Uh, forget about trying to um, uh, cut our carbon emissions. We just want to keep the water out. Thanks very much at the moment. That that ought to be the, the the crucial thing that all councils are concerned with is protecting their citizens from the water. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing is, um, you're the regional council. Hawke's Bay Regional Council, as you know, I'm on the Otago Regional Council. One of our prime jobs as well, both for both of us, because we have uh, sort of valley plains, is stop, uh, stop banks um, and protecting people from um, extreme weather events. I guess we'll find out in the future how extreme this was in terms of um, the deluge. Uh, yes, no, no. You, you're quite correct that we're here to protect lives and livelihoods, and uh, uh, and we've got to do it at a pace that we've never never experienced before. Because this event, um, there's a, there's another event round the next corner. Um, it's extraordinary mm, what's mm. happened in the last uh, six weeks of mm. in terms of weather events, mm. um, and 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 we've got to recognise that. Uh, and double down. Uh, I think we'll need Michael. You know what it's like trying to raise rates from from the populace, but uh, I'm certain that, that if we go to the public with a, a, a value proposition to say, look, here's a special uh, rate, uh, we've all got to pay for this and uh, it's going to cost us, but um, I'm, I'm sure there will be a willingness to do that and we've got to get on and do it soon, fast and without the hindrance of ridiculous uh, um, uh, local government planning rules that uh, uh, require us to consult to the cows come home. Yeah, and I guess also because of the volume, uh, amount of this can be required, the government's going to need to step into that somewhere too, Neil. Oh, yes, yes. We'll, we'll certainly need a major um, investment by central government. Um, and, and this, you know, we're talking... Uh, in, whole, in Napier alone, we're talking at least $100 million simply to get it up to a, a, 50, a one in 50 year event. Uh, and we're, we're, you know, we're, we're sitting at about one in 10, one in 20. Uh, so we've got a long way to go. Now, just um, for, for people who haven't, well, I think a lot of people will have been to the Hawke's Bay, but for folk who aren't there, 
The Heratonga Plains is crossed by three rivers, as I remember, the Tuki Tuki, the Nororo... Uh, Nororo, the, the, and, and the Tutaikuri. And the Esk so is sort of further north, isn't it? Yes, the Esk is, is beyond uh, the sort of plains area. Uh, so we've got three major river systems, uh, and, and unfortunately for us... Uh, and, and the entity I work for, Hohepa, they converge right on our doorstep. Um, <laughs> the irony is today that uh, that's relatively dry. It's uh, it's everyone that's sitting behind that that's uh, uh, received the, the brunt of this. Okay, so we know also yesterday that six bridges are down in your areas, some, some quite little historic, quite like the little Brookfields Bridge through to Pukatapa and things like that. You've got bridges going over those rivers. Um, they are intact, as I understand. Is that right? Yes, yes. The main, the main arterial route, the expressway, uh, the bridge is still intact. Uh, that's a, they're, they're both relatively new bridges uh, and, and look to be... Uh, they're being inspected at the moment, but the, the roads are closed. You can't access them, which is a real problem for us, uh, start keeping staff uh, who live in Hastings become naked. But um, but those yes those bridges are still are still up and standing. Uh, it's it's the uh, one the bridge at Waiohiki that uh, was mm. majorly damaged. The mm. one at Brookfields has disappeared, and 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 uh, the one at Pukitapu. So there's just no connectivity between Napier and Hastings. Um, you've been around Hawkes Bay for a long time. You've um, certainly been in a leadership role for a long time there too. Um, and you're a practical man, having been an orchardist, um, but also a, a manager of um, a, a, an NGO too. Looking around you, Neil, how long, and I know you're dealing still with this other, a new flooding crisis there this morning, but when do you expect um, the, um, I guess, the floodwaters to recede sufficiently for that connectivity to occur? Another day, another two, another three? Well, I would have thought that we were close to it, given that we didn't have rain overnight uh, this morning. But I, um, I've, every every time I say this is uh, this is going, this is passing, and it's all over, it, the nightmare continues again. Uh, and so we've got that this morning. Uh, now I'd suggest that we're we're three days away from uh, the expressway opening, um, and and that essentially being the only r- r- route between Napier and Hastings. Um, and and uh, probably around the three-day mark for that to inspect those bridges. Uh, but um, in the meantime, we just have to sit tight, uh, waiting for the power. Well, that'll be that'll be the major. Yeah, and that's the and that's the and the other thing I guess is frustration. And I would imagine uh, a city of sixty thousand people. It's the frustration of communication too, is it, Neil? Knowing what's oh, look, happening. Yep. Exactly. And 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 this this has, has been horrendous for for us trying to. Uh, work out uh, who needs moving from where when. Uh, we simply can't talk to people uh, in, in our houses in the community, and uh, so we've had. I've had to drive um, for, uh, many, many miles. I've run out of diesel. Actually, Michael, and that's another thing. Can't fill my diesel tank up. So I've been right. I've been a full tank yesterday. I'm down to zero now, uh, driving house to house. Uh, uh, shifting people uh, from one to a place to another. I noticed soon, as soon as I shifted them into a motel in Taradale, then I had to shift them again. Uh, so it, it's that sort of uh, uh, real frustration, not knowing precisely where the system is is uh, is is uh, impacting the most, uh, and 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 just trying to work out. It's been a Rubik's cube, trying to keep vulnerable people uh, who are spinning out. Uh, and and man- managing managing the risks around them, but uh, but we're coping well. There's some wonderful staff on hand that are doing a tremendous job. Okay, all right, um, Neil. Thank you so much. If it's okay with you, we might give you a call tomorrow. Um, provided, Please do. Yeah, 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 just to catch up with with what's happening and things like that. Sure. And thank you so much for joining us. And all power to you, my friend. Um, look sure. Out. You look after yourself. Um, that is um, Neil Curtin. Um, he is um, a regional councillor. I think he's in his sixth term there. Um, so you will have heard um, that a fresh crisis this morning, people being evacuated. And, of course, you know, it's always the ones that um, you forget about. Um, people who are vulnerable, you're thinking, oh, they'll be able to cope, but then there'll be so many people who are not coping this morning.